Now, the important thing to keep in mind about the AMT that you're paying related to ISOs is that you will at some point receive those amounts back, meaning that if you paid, let's say $50,000 in AMT in 2020, then in 2021, if you disposed of substantially all of those shares in, again, a qualified disposition, then it's very likely that you would receive a lot of the AMT that you paid at the federal and state levels right back in form of the credit. Now, the way the credit works is that in a subsequent tax year, after you've had that AMT hit, if the ordinary income tax is higher than the AMT, that gap is bridged through the AMT credit, all right? So all of these AMT implications related to ISOs, you get them back. Sometimes it happens in the next two years, sometimes in the next three years. It depends on how things play out and when you sell your shares and the timing of that. But in general, most or all of that AMT should come back to you. So it's the AMT effect is temporary. And once you sell the shares in a qualified transaction, then you will enjoy long-term capital gain treatment. It's just a matter of going through this kind of roller coaster to get there. But that's how the AMT credit works. So it may very well be that you have $50,000 AMT tax hit in 2020. You will have then an AMT credit that goes forward and is carried forward to future tax years until you used all of it up, meaning your ordinary income tax exceeded your AMT for up to that 50000 in subsequent tax years, then you get all of it back. It just might take a while, depending on when you dispose of those shares in general. So what is then Form 3921? Form 3921 is important in the AMT world as it relates to ISOs because it has important information on it. And this is a form you get when you exercise an ISO in a particular tax year. So if you exercised ISOs in 2020, you should receive a 3921 generally. And it has information such as the date the option was granted, the date the option was exercised, the exercise price per share, number of shares transferred, and the fair market value per share on exercise date. All this information really important in terms of putting together a tax return when you have ISO implications. So that's form 3921. And now let's take a look at a few scenarios to really understand the dynamics at play. And we first are going to take a look at the assumptions we're taking into account to build these scenarios. So the wages that we're going to assume for tax years 2018 through 2021 are going to be 200,000 per tax year. Those are your regular W-2 salary wages, whatever you want to call it. Now, with regard to the ISOs, we're going to assume the following. The ISO grant date is going to be 1-1-2018. And the grant date, let's remember, has no effect on the ordinary income tax side or the AMT side, meaning nothing really happens from a tax perspective on that date. But remember that to have a disqualifying or a qualifying disposition, the holding periods become extremely important. And you have to, for preferential tax treatment, hold shares obtained through the exercise of incentive stock options for at least two years after the grant date and one year after the date of exercise to receive preferential tax treatment. So that's where the grant date comes in. The total number of ISOs granted invested, we're going to assume is 100,000. And the total number of ISOs exercised prior to 1-1-2020, one, we're going to assume is zero. So the ISOs were granted in 2018 and not exercised until 2020. Now, the number of remaining ISOs available for exercise is going to be 100,000 in 2020. The exercise price per share is going to be $0.06 or $0.06 cents a share. The current fair market value per share is going to be $2, and we're going to assume that it's unchanged throughout all these examples just so we can compare apples to apples. And the bargain element per share for AMT purposes is going to be $1.94, which is the $2 per share minus the $0.06 cents per share. That is the total bargain element, the difference between the fair market value of the shares and the exercise price. And the total potential bargain element for AMT purposes is going to be the 194,000, meaning the 100,000 times the 1.94 gives us 194,000 in bargain element potentially. Now let's take a look at some of these scenarios. The first scenario is going to be actually a disqualifying disposition, which means that we have not met the two year and the one year holding periods. And in this case, it's going to be an exercise and sale of 100% of the vested ISOs in tax year 2018. So the exercise and the sales occurring in the same tax year, which means that it's a disqualifying disposition. These amounts are essentially going to be added to income 
for income tax purposes. And there's not going to be really preferential tax treatment. So let's take a look at the return with this example. We have the Form 1040 here for 2018, and we have the 200000 in wages, and really not much else going on with this return. And we can see that the total amount of income tax due here is going to be the 41850 We're going to assume that that 41850 is withheld from paychecks. So essentially, it's paid in throughout the year, and the additional tax liability then turns out to be zero. So let's now deal with the disqualifying disposition. Essentially, 194000 is being added right to the wages. And typically, they'll be withholdings throughout the year. But I wanted you guys to see the difference that occurs once this happens. Now, we see that the tax liability increased by $67,540. And typically, these amounts would be withheld from paychecks, depending on how your withholdings are set up. But at the end of the day, that's the additional tax liability that's being triggered by the disqualifying disposition. So we can see here that the total bargain element for AMT purposes is really not applicable because we have no AMT implication in 2018 due to the fact that we have a disqualifying disposition. In that case, AMT does not apply. It's simply added to the wage amounts and it's taken care of that way. No AMT effect whatsoever. In that case, we have the additional federal income tax liability of the 67540 that's scenario one, disqualifying disposition. Let's then assume in scenario two that 100% of the vested ISOs are exercised in tax year 2020. Now, in this case, we're going to have to change the scenario a bit and we're going to use 2019 software, but we're modeling tax year 2020. The 2020 software just came out, so we're not going to use that. We're going to use 2019 and for all intents and purposes, just pretend that this is 2020. Don't worry about the fact that it's 2019. The same rules basically apply. And in scenario two, you'll see that we have 200,000 in wages, just as was indicated up here. Okay. And we then take into account that the total amount of taxes due just in considering the wages themselves is going to be 41,413. And we're going to assume those are being withheld from the paycheck. So the total amount you owe is zero. So the total tax liability before we take the exercise of the ISOs into account, 41,413. Now we're going to assume that we're exercising in this case, 100% of the vested ISOs in tax year 2020. In that case, we have this laid out here, 100% is being exercised in 2020. The total bargain element applicable in 2020 is going to be 194,000, which is the bargain element we calculated prior. So let's see what effect this has on the return. Again, remember that we owe zero at this point because everything is being withheld from paychecks, but we can go over to the AMT side of things and add the bargain element right here in terms of incentive stock options. Now, if we go back to the Form 1040, we can see that the wages are still the same. Much of these amounts are still the same, but we now have an amount of 44,935 coming in from the AMT side of things. Let's take a look at 6251 and understand what's going on. Now, as mentioned previously, the taxable income comes right from Form 1040, so 187,800. Let's go to 1040, and we'll see that taxable income is 187,800. That's going straight to 6251. Now, it's also taking the standard deduction and adding that back, as previously discussed. Then we have the incentive stock option amount, the ISO bargain element, that's being added in. And we get to alternative minimum taxable income or AMTI of 394000 Now we do have the exemption, which for the single filing status is 71700 So we add that in and we can see here that we're below the threshold of 510300 So we can go ahead and use that. That gives us the alternative minimum taxable income after the exemption of 322300 now, we can see that the instructions say that in terms of calculating the rates, there's 26% and 28%. So what's happening here is if line six is 194,800 or less, multiply it by 26%. If it's more, then the instructions say to multiply it by 28% and subtract 3896. Now that's really what's going on here. If we take 322,300 times 0.28 minus 3896, we get 86348. Okay. And essentially, we have a good portion of 
the AMTI being subject to the 28% rate. Specifically, that portion is the amount that exceeds 194800 in tax year 2019. Now that amount is being adjusted for inflation, but essentially once you exceed the threshold for the 26% rate, the 28% rate then becomes effective. And that's how we calculate this AMT of 44935. Again, we look at the tentative minimum tax. We say, look, under the AMT rules, what is the total tax liability? And we can see that that's 86,348. And under the ordinary income tax rules, the total tax liability is 41,413. So we can see then that the AMT is the difference between the alternative minimum tax and the ordinary income tax of 44,935. And that is the additional amount that's going to be owed for this tax year. But keep in mind, it's not going to be withheld from the paychecks. This is a huge surprise that a lot of taxpayers get when they deal with the exercise of ISOs is that they're expecting their employer to withhold the applicable taxes. It's not going to happen, unfortunately. So they typically have AMT implications at both the federal and the state levels. And we can see here that the amount owed is that 44,935. Now that's the scenario where we're exercising all of those vested ISOs in one tax year. Okay. We don't have to lump it all together. We could spread it all out. We're going to take a look at that. But the total federal income tax liability in excess of withholdings for tax year 2020 is calculated to be 44,935. But we also get the AMT credit, remember, which will be carried forward to a future tax year where we'd be able to use it in years in which the ordinary income tax exceeds the AMT. So it's the opposite. In tax years where the AMT exceeds ordinary tax, you have AMT implication. But when that switches, then that gap is bridged by the AMT credit. And we can see here, if we look on the general info area here, that the federal carryovers on Form 8801 tentative minimum tax credit is the 44,935. So these amounts you're paying in temporarily. The idea is you should get most or all of that AMT back in subsequent tax years, most of which happens in the year in which you dispose of the shares that you obtain from the exercise of ISOs. But it depends on how all the numbers are playing out because you can see it's a dance between ordinary income tax and AMT. So that's really the dynamic at play there. So these ISO amounts are not lost. You're just paying them in temporarily. The idea is you should get most or all of those AMT amounts back at the federal and state levels. And that was scenario two, 100% of the vested ISOs to be exercised in tax year 2020. The additional tax hit, 44,935. And it's noted here that we have significant exposure to the 28% rate in tax year 2020. That's always something to keep in mind. If we can keep ourselves in the 26% rate as opposed to 28%, that's going to be preferential. And we always aim to optimize for that whenever we can. That brings us to scenario three, 50% of vested ISOs to be exercised in tax year 2020 and 50% of vested ISOs to be exercised in tax year 2021.